everybody. I'm Joe Flick. I'm with your Montana State Library. I'm the CE coordinator and this is the sixth out of six Aspen Basics classes that we've been offering over the past few months to try to help our librarians understand how to navigate and conduct the business that you need to do in Aspen, which if you didn't know stands for Access to Services, Programs, and E-Networks. So you're not seeing, I do not, I think I'm looking at my, oh, chat comments. Let me just make sure that we have, I'm gonna change something here, make sure everyone can see the chat. Maybe I can't do that right now, sorry. I will definitely um, make mention of anything that comes into the chat box. So hi everybody. So what we're gonna do today is um, talk about certification and how you get there in Aspen. A lot of the way that Aspen was designed was actually kind of in mind of tracking certification and um, so a lot of the features in Aspen are kind of built around um, your events that, that, that are like today's event, a training event. So we're going to demonstrate for you, I'm going to do this, how to add credits for Montana-based uh, training, which is Montana, that the, it's training that's provided by us here at the Montana State Library, um, training that you might get at the Montana Library Association, as long as we know about it. Um, we put it in our events calendar. The Trails Consortium, uh, Pamela tries to make sure that I know about those trainings so I can post them in our events calendar. Library Federations, again, it's uh, it occasionally happens that I I don't know that there's some training going on, but if I if we know, it's posted in the Aspen events calendar and, and then the credits are there. Uh, sometimes our state library vendors, um, for instance, Bibliostat has recently been doing some training around the state and uh, they may actually be visiting uh, and setting up a training where we're not at it, but we, st we are still know about it and promoting it in the calendar. So anything like that, even libraries that offer a training event regionally or system-wide um, will often let me know that, there's, that they're doing this training so I can post it in the events calendar. Sometimes that isn't visible publicly to everybody because it's not open for everybody to attend. But if there's several librarians attending a training event, then we like to know about it so we can put it in our calendar and that makes it easier for people to claim the credit. And it also helps us to keep track of what kinds of training is already going on around the state. So we don't duplicate efforts. So we'll also demonstrate how to add credits that are not in the Aspen um, e-calendar for things like webinars that you take outside the library community, like the list that I shared yesterday of, and I try to post every month the list of webinars that are going on all across the country that are free and directed at librarians. Um, out, online courses that you take. This is more of a new thing, I think. In the past few years, we're beginning to see more librarians take online courses uh, and claim credit for those, which of course you're welcome to do. Out-of-state conferences that you might attend, either virtual conferences or in-person ones, or training events that are happening at your library only. So if you host a training event for your staff, then it won't be listed necessarily in the events calendar, but you can still claim credit for it. And then we're also going to demonstrate how to apply for Montana State Library certification, because everybody wants that, of course. So here's the easiest way to get those credits that you for the training that you've attended. Um, actually, there's two easiest ways. <laughs> you can register in a, for an event, like many of you probably registered for today's event, and you attend the event. Then you just need to check and make sure that your credits are listed. We're assuming when you register an event that you do attend and intend to attend it live. You don't need to register for webinars uh, at the State Library if you're just planning to watch the recording. But of course, you, you can. Um, so if you either watch the recording or attend live, then your credit is already secured. If you don't do either of those things, then you need to delete that credit. And you need to, to do that, you need to open a help ticket. Um, so don't register for things that you're not really sure you're going to uh, participate in. 
So that's the, one of the easiest way. The other easiest way is to review a recording or attend an event that you didn't pre-register for and then just log in later and claim your credit by using the Add CE Credit button. It's that green button and if you scroll down on our events calendar you'll see the whole list of events and anything that is um, credit bearing that you haven't already claimed will have this Add CE Credit button next to it. So it makes for a pretty easy way to add your credits. You just have to click that button, wait a few seconds for Aspen to think about it because Aspen seems to do a lot of thinking and <laughs> Sometimes you do have to just be patient with it um, and then just check always to make sure that your credits are listed correctly. We have noticed lately that there are a lot of duplicate credits showing up in people's records and so we th we think that's probably because they're double clicking on things and um, and so just be patient, click once and then check. And if you're ever having any trouble adding CE credits, just contact me or anybody any of the staff at the State Library will be happy to help you. So it's this isn't the easiest way but still pretty I call it the easier way is to find an event in the drop down list. Now this is the way that you're all familiar with from the old library directory. We do have a drop down list for you to select from in Aspen to select your CE credits. Now this is a two step process. You select your event and events are listed for 12 months in Aspen. And so for you'll find all the events that were listed in the last 12 months in reverse chronological order with the most recent ones showing up first. And they won't, don't show up in this list until the day of the event. So if you're looking for something that's happening next week, it won't be there till next week. So you click on the drop down arrow and hit that go button. That's going to bring you to that event's record page. And at the bottom of that record page is the save button. A lot of people miss this step. So I really want to emphasize that save button is what you need to do. So it's going to be, I'll show you what it looks like. This is the event record. Here, here's to um, the Aspen Basics course for last month. And there's that save button down at the bottom. So don't forget to click that save button or otherwise it doesn't save. So those, that's the easier way. It's a two step process. So the other one's one step process. So this is easier, not easiest. And then there's an easy way. These are for events that do, that were not sponsored in Montana and are not on the events calendar at Aspen. And these are events like the ARSL conference that we had a whole bunch of people attend recently, the Virtual ARSL, um, uh, um, Association for Rural and Small Libraries conference. For those events, you have to create new. And, and that's this little button that's under the drop down list. And it's all in red. And when you actually hover over it, it turns completely red. And then you click on that and that's going to take you to a page where you have to complete. Um, I think there's about five fields that are required. Anything with an asterisk next to the field is required. And then um, you, you hit that save button and it records your, your event. Let me see, do I have, yeah, I think I do. Yeah, this is what the, um, the form looks like. So I put in um, today some credits for our um, our pretend librarian Felonius Grew and um, Felonius attended the Supercharged Story Times um, in on Web Junction. That's a self-paced course, and he filled out all of his um, information on this form, all the asterisk areas. I really love it, by the way, if you if you take the extra time to just fill out the sponsor area because that gives us really good information about where everybody's getting their training. It's not required, but I really appreciate it. Then you click to the bottom and hit that save button and then always go back and check your credits and make sure they're there. So let's do this live. I'm going to open up a web page. Let me do that real quick. Make sure I'm 
logged in. Oh, I'm going to have to log in as felonious group. Just a moment. Unless there's somebody there who is willing to screen share who happens to be logged in. I do think I'm seeing all the chat comments. No, unfortunately, I don't have the chat um, visible and I'm not sure how to change that right away. Sorry about that. This is why I don't really like to use the webinar version of Zoom and probably never will again. So here's a question in the chat. Um, is there a way to see these type of events that other librarians have added so that everyone doesn't have to enter the same information? Well, Kathleen, it's interesting you say that. Um, that, that is part of the back-end design of Aspen to allow users to enter information and then for it to be visible to other users. We haven't really enabled that yet because we don't have a way, a really good system for being able to verify. I mean, we wouldn't want somebody to log in and put in a bunch of bogus um, information that was not correct and then have other people add that and that would just compound the problem. So for now, no, there isn't a way. However, if there is something that you think a lot of librarians are attending in Montana, um, say you know that you know there's 20 or 30 people that are going to be taking this same um, webinar, uh, then let me know. I can make that event for you in, in Aspen so that it will show up in the drop down list and will show up in the, it won't necessarily be visible in the public calendar, but it will show up in all the CE resources. Yeah, I see that. You only have the option to chat and raise hand or Q&A and I apologize that for that. I don't, I must have set up today's webinar incorrectly. Boy, we all like to chat so much. You know, um, let's see what else we have in the, in the chat box before we get going. Um, oh, how can I receive the list that you compile for continuing education? Uh, somebody, Pam, very nicely put my, um, oh, wait a second. What if, I'm trying to see if I can do this one. Hey, maybe um, I can um, put that. Uh, Pam put the uh, trainer word, um, WordPress site. It's my blog and I post those events every month to my blog. You can also, I get them all from the Wyoming State Library um, training calendar. So you can always go to that resource too. Um, I just share it and then I post it to Wired every month. So are any of you guys not on Wired? You're not getting the listserv because you really should be. waiting for everybody to show up. Any responses? Let's see, Wendy says, um, nope, not getting anything from Wired Dawn. I'm gonna put my email in the chat box. Send me a quick email for the information on Wired and I will send it to you so you can get signed up. Because we do, that's, usual, that's our usual way to communicate what's going on with uh, webinars and, and it's not, you don't get too many posts. I don't think it's, I've, I'm not, I'm never overwhelmed by them. Um, if you ever think I'm doing too many posts, will somebody please tell me? Cause I think I'm the one who posts more than anybody else. Okay, so back to, I wanted to show you my, let's see, are you seeing my, Aspen screen. I wanted to log out of here and get into. Yeah. Are you seeing my Aspen screen? Checking to make sure you got the right one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Thanks. So I'm going to log in as my pal Felonius grew because Felonius is. Let me just get this information. Balonius is 
um, a regular user of Aspen, so it'll look much more like your, oh, you get the correct password for Felonius. Where are you, Felonius? None of these functions work without a password and being logged into Aspen. You can see events, but you can't register for them. You can see the link and use the link, but you have to be logged in to do any of these CE functions. This is, I'm really glad this happened actually. I learned a new trick today at Aspen um, that I'm happy to share with you. In fact, I even put it on the screen as a tip. Um, when you get to this OO page, any, I suppose a lot of you have encountered this. I, I have lots of times. There's a way to kind of jumpstart Aspen. If you just go to Aspen up here in the um, URL address page for Chrome, I'm going to enter in aspen.mt.gov, which is the home page for Aspen. It kind of resets Aspen. So like I had just logged out of my old account and then I logged into the felonious grew account. So that confused Aspen a little bit and I got that uh-oh page. Um, that can also happen if our tech people are actually doing work on Aspen and do some refresh while you just innocently happen to be working in Aspen, you'll get that OO page or things will freeze up in Aspen. And Chuck pointed this out to me that if you go to the aspen.mt.gov page, it kind of resets your, your screen, so. That's good to know. So we're going to start here by um, going to the Aspen events calendar. And we'll take that easiest option. I happen to know that Felonius Grew is very close to achieving his, all the credits he needs, um, most of which just happen to be bogus, but in real life, they would be real credits. Um, he's almost ready to receive his certification, but he needs one more library services to the public credit. So he's looking for something that he may have attended recently that he can claim. Okay, we've got a super general question from Tiffany. You mentioned Chrome. Does Aspen work best in Chrome? I believe it does. Chuck, that's really a Chuck question. Um, it is the, it is the, uh, or Tracy, maybe you can jump in on that. It's generally what we recommend, right, Chrome? I promoted Chuck to panelist. I oh. use Chrome all the time, but I actually am not sure. We'll see if Chuck will answer the question. We test it the most in Chrome, but honestly, it, we, we use all web standards. It should work well in any, uh, any browser. We had some problems the other week, but we found out that we actually had a server that died, which caused the problem that made it so certain browsers couldn't work. So if you ever see that it isn't working in one of your browsers, please submit a ticket because we, we again, test mostly in Chrome, but we want to make sure it works everywhere. We do not support Internet Explorer 11 or older. So it's got to be either Edge, Chrome, or Firefox, or Opera. There's a couple others, but you get the idea. So basically Chrome, <laughs> okay, I'll do it this way, use Chrome. Um, so here's our Aspen events calendar. And I just wanna point out if you scroll down, you'll see there are um, a number of events posted down here that, um, and I can actually expand this list to a larger list. Um, things that I've already claimed credit for like this one, Transforming Teen Services, I should say Felonious Crew already claimed credit for. The Add CE Credit button is not visible. So um, that helps prevent you from getting duplicate credits. But Felonious does need one more library services to the public credit. So I'm going to say that Felonious Crew, I'm going to just say this. He went to which one? I know, the customer services de-escalation techniques webinar. Okay, well, I, yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna add his credit. I get this little box at the top that says, please confirm that you wish to add this credit. It doesn't want you to click 
by mistake. Removing credits in Aspen, by the way, requires you to open a help ticket. Ah, I've got from Pam. She didn't know about the green credit button. Well, it's it's not that new, but but it's newer. <laughs> So this, as you'll notice, a little wheel turning around up here at the top of my screen and my tab. Um, this does take a minute, so be patient. Don't click that button again. Um, Janine said, good to know. I thought I had been told in the past to use Firefox for all government sites. I think in the past that probably was true. Um, Chrome has become, I think, more of a standard. It's just, I was a big Firefox user, but pretty much use Chrome all the time. I think it's also worth it if something isn't appear, appear, appearing correctly on the screen to just try another browser. But as Chuck is saying, just let us know so we can we can um, check it ourselves. Um, the escalation is listed twice, and uh, Pam pointed that out. There are two events. One is the live event, which was three hours long, and the other is the recording, which was just an hour long. So now it tells me that I've successfully added fall workshops. I'm going to click the OK button. It's going to take me back to the um, event page. But at this point, I really, I'm waiting for this page to load, I really want to head back to my user page. So I'm just going to go see if this will work. I'm trying another page. Since that one is, it seems like every time we do this session, it's slower. So here's Felonius Grew's Aspen admin page. Now, also called their user homepage. Um, you can get to that from the blue menu over here. If I wasn't on this page, you'd see Aspen admin right at the top. Or you can get to it from using this role menu um, link either one but this is the page that's going to tell me that he is look at this staff track it's really close to being it's not submitted but it's all full do you see the the progress bar is completely full so now what we're going to do is just finish up his certification real quick and i'm going to click on that but go back to my let me just go back to my presentation for a minute. Oh, we've added that last credit. Let's talk about applying for MSL certification. And we'll go back to Felonius Crew and complete this process. So you always want to you want to review your record in Aspen by clicking on that Aspen admin menu item on the right hand side, selecting your current track, and then scrolling down to see all your credits claimed. And we'll do that. I'll demonstrate that in a second. Check with it that your supervisor, that's usually your director. If you're a director, it's probably the chair of the library board, is listed as the person that will verify your credits. It's probably the one thing that delays you getting your certification the most is that you didn't choose somebody to verify your credits. Aspen will still let you submit your application, but then I have to email you and ask you who to send. Um, an email to to ask for verifying credits and that's just one more one more step and um, if it's already in there then I can just go right ahead to getting your credits verified so and it's always a good idea um, to let the person know that you are submitting your application for certification and um, answer any questions they might have about your credits if they um, they have to write a statement to me to, that verify that your credits are true and valid and so if they have any questions it's always good to know that before you submit your application and then you click on the submit your application for certification button Ta -da! and then you wait until I have a chance to review your your certification send out an email to um, your the person who's going to verify which I will copy you and so make sure that your email is correct in Aspen so that um, you get a, you can view that see that copy come through and then when I get that verification statement back I'll issue your certification and you can then um, oh and I also automatically ask Aspen will create a new track for you so let's see what how that looks so remember our buddy felonious grew I just clicked on his track well here is his 
um, continuing education program track participation detail record. And it shows Thelonious Grew. It shows that he is not submitted, but Aspen tells me that the continuing education program track participation is eligible for submission. It's got um, all the credits needed. This is that validation position box that I mentioned right here. La da. I'm going to go ahead and list you, Tracy, as a board. Um, let's see, your test director. This is one of your pretend accounts in Aspen. Um, and then uh, I'm just going to go down and look if there's anybody else, anything else. If you want to send, um, have, although people very rarely request this, but you can actually request that. Uh, um, that recognition letter is sent out to somebody on your board or to a government official. Um, go down and check your credits. Here's the credit detail. Felonius Grew has 63 credits total. He has 10 credits in collection management and technical services, 10 in library service to the public. I, would, I should say 12 in library service to the public. He's got 31 in technology. Um, and then these are actually the actual credits that he is claiming in his application. So you want to look through here and make sure you don't have duplicate credits. And I wanted to show you what a duplicate credit looks like. Here's one. Transforming Teen Services was, is listed twice here and here. And so those, luckily, those are one credit recordings. And Felonius has 12 credits here. And how many credits overall? 63. So this won't actually affect his abilities, but he, what you, he should do at this point is open a help ticket and request one of these be deleted. We try to clean up all the credits before the certificate is issued because once the certificate's issued, your, your record is archived in Aspen and it's a lot harder to go back and change it. So. He's already to, to submit. Let's say he, he has taken care of that duplicate credit. Then all he has to do is hit the submit button and it will um, create his certification. So Chuck, is it okay if I hit the submit button? I'm not gonna break anything. You're the head of CE. I don't care what button you hit. <laughs> <laughs> it makes work for you. Okay, well, I know it is gonna, it actually is gonna um, pop up an email in my email box and I heard it just come in. I'll show you right here. So it's just gonna tell me that he, um, Filoni Screw has submitted for certification and that's when I um, just put this aside in my certificates to be processed file and come back. I usually do these. I try to do them once a week, but I unfortunately, don't aren't able to keep to that schedule all the time but I promise we'll get your certificate um, processed within a month so that's the whole thing you'll get an e a copy of an email I'll, I'll, I'll email you directly if there's any um, if I have any questions or there's any problems with your account um, or your submission and we'll work to try to get those resolved. And then when we're ready, I will send the, a copy of all your credits that are listed in your account to your supervisor for verification. You'll get a copy of that email. You should follow up with them. And when I hear back from them, then I usually issue the certificate, you know, the same day or the next day. And at that point, I might as well go ahead and do this first felonious group. You just, he can, um, he can go ahead and sign up back into um, his uh, Aspen admin page and he will see this as an issued certificate. So right here where it says submitted, this one would actually be changed to issued. Then when you click on this link right here, he'll be able to view and print his certificate from that page. It just shows the current status as submitted, but once it's issued, there'll be a little link here to view or print the certificate. Oh, apparently his extra credit has been fixed, so that's good. 
So any questions about that? I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording so that we can go um, and, and answer any questions directly. Just want to point out, so here we we're on this one, that really good tip just to reemphasize, you know, if you Aspen just sort of hangs up or gets frozen or you receive that uh oh message, enter aspen.mt.gov in the address box at the top of your browser and hit that hit the enter key, return key, and this will reset um, Aspen for you. So Joe, Sarah asked about the save button. I I think you were at the point of showing the certification you were like on the, the submit I think and you can correct me if I'm wrong Sarah I think it's just to save like if you add your validation but is there ah okay she says yes that is the page I, I don't know that you have the power to save anything once it's been submitted on this page or change anything so yeah, I think you it's can't just, touch your submitting. Yeah, once it's been submitted, that's just it's it's an kind of an artifact from how this page might look in some other versions, but I don't think it does anything. I know a guy that might make that disappear then. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we discover things. Does that answer your question, Sarah? And then from Dawn, um, where can one find more on CE credits or to compete to complete credits in a timely manner other than Aspen? Oh yes, I will. I will show you that right quick. This is the WordPress site. It's let's see if I can find my. Here it is, the Montana State Library Trainers blog. That would be my blog. So it's MSL Trainer at WordPress.com. You know, what's nice about having the these things posted on the blog is that um, I post once a month usually on the blog. Occasionally I'll post a few more times, but usually just once a month. Um, but you can go back for several months and find older things here. As you can see, other blog posts, they go back years. You never want to watch webinars that are too old, though because credits expire and um so if you in your uh, the credit for a webinar it is dated on the day that the webinar was created not the day that you watched the webinar so if you watch a webinar today that was created in february of 2017 that webinar is going to expire in february of 2021 so before you even have a chance to use those credits they'll disappear. So it's best to watch webinars that are more recent. And somebody points out that well, that actually Aspen retires, expires those credits to the minute. So if you say it, it lasted until 9.30 a.m. in February 1st of 2020 of, of 2017, it'll expire at that minute in 2021. So is there anything else? All of my helpers who are here, Tracy, Chuck, Pam, anything else you want to add? Before I hit the, the only thing I only thing I would add is if you have credits that are about to expire and you're postponing submitting it, the second you hit submit. Aspen locks those credits in for you to the date that you submitted it. So if you decide, well, I'll just, I'll submit it next week. Well, next week you may have lost four credits that you needed for certification. Now, once you've submitted it, Joe can review it three months from now, but it is based on your submission date. Yes. So, and I've done my best to make sure that the system consistently does that so that you never lose credits that you legitimately submitted on a given date. Just because it's taking Joe a little longer to process them. <laughs> yeah, so their submission date kind of freezes that account. The other thing, a question that comes up sometimes about credits and, and certification is, um, you know, say you have more credits than you actually need. And you when you 
if you've entered those credits into Aspen, when you and you submit your your application for certification, all of those credits are used up, whether they're 60 or 62. Credits are not rolled over to your to your next renewal. Um, you can do that manually. You can wait and hold those credits and, and put them in um, later. Uh, but Aspen actually retires or exp um, uses, marks them as expired, or I don't know, it's not expired is not the right term, but marks them as used up um, when you, when, as soon as you hit that submit button. So if you have 120 credits in there um, and you apply for certification, 120 credits are retired. And you'd have to, if there were some of those credits that you plan to use for your next renewal, you'll have to re-enter them. The credits are marked as claimed for that certificate. That's a good term, claim. Thank you, Chuck. And that's, th there's a good reason for that too. I'm sorry, Tracy, but let me just point out that we want you to get 60 new credits every four years. Tracy? Yeah, you had a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, Dawn asked about uh, using CE from other states. Oh yeah, by all means, feel free. Um, you'll have to enter those in using the, um, that red button on the, on the sheet below the drop down menu. And I have instructions on the help on the tip sheets on how to do that. Yeah. Great. And then Tiffany asks, so for the CE credits that you can add in Aspen, are those all recorded webinars? No, you could add, you can add CE credits for um, conferences that you attend out of state, or even a conference that you attended in Montana that wasn't really a library conference. For instance, if your library director has, um, or, or you as a library director attend a training in your community, say, for customer service training um, that is directly related to your, to your library job. You shouldn't claim credit for like a CPR course necessarily that is, you know, like I was an EMT and I took all kinds of training for my EMT certification that I didn't cl claim that as training for my library certification. Your training for library certification should be directly related to your library job. But you, it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be the training that you find in our um, event calendar. It certainly can be other training. On, in general, most people get their training through um, the events that happen in Montana and from webinars that I post on, onto the list. That's, the last time I actually looked at this data, which was a couple of years ago, um, it was a little less than 30% of credits that were claimed were from something other than um, our Montana-based training events, face-to-face -face events, conferences, and stuff like that. That was the most of the way that everybody got their certification. But I suspect that may have changed a lot, um, especially lately since nobody can travel to conferences. So online training definitely counts. And if you get to something that you're not sure of, just shoot me an email. And um, for instance, you take, say you take an online course and you're not sure how many credit hours to claim for that. Um, it takes you so much time, you're just not sure. Go ahead and shoot me an email and I'll be happy to, um, to follow up with you. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop our recording.